Trainers, I am Corey from SKG9000, your hostess with the mostess, your resident Pokemon master and enthusiast. And it's that glorious time of year when we're this much closer to the seventh generation of Pokemon video games. That's right, we are a mere 30 days from the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. In order to celebrate this momentous occasion, the next month is going to be filled with a lot of cool Pokemon themed videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin Pokemon Month! say that right now as a Pokemon fan, I am incredibly excited. This is a game series that I've been playing since its inception in 1998, and I cannot wait for the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Just today, Nintendo actually released a demo of Pokemon Sun and Moon, which is absolutely amazing, by the way. You definitely need to check it out. It's not just an actual demo of the game, but actually a prologue to the main story. And if you play, you're going to get the very coveted Ash Greninja, which is just as awesome as the trailers make it out to be. I'm a huge Greninja fan, so I'm super excited about that. But what I'm really excited for is Pokemon Month. Every single year, I get to do Pokemon-themed videos for you guys for a month solid, and it's really, really fun. And the fact that this is all going to lead up to a brand new game makes it all the more exciting. I did this when Pokemon X and Y came out, and it was a really fun time. I did a lot of top 10 videos and discussions, and that's exactly what I want to do today. The best thing about this Pokemon month, however, is that it's beginning in October. And if any of you guys actually know me, you know that I absolutely love Halloween. It's pretty much my favorite holiday of the year, and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to celebrate both Pokemon and Halloween at the same time. And how am I going to do that? By counting down my top 10 favorite ghost Pokemon. That's right, Ghost Pokemon. Easily one of the most unique typings in the entire series. Made famous in the very first generation by the Gengar line of Ghastly Haunter and Gengar. The three mysterious Ghost Pokemon would eventually get some brand new companions in the future iterations of the series. All just as mysterious and spooky as the last. I love them for their creepiness, their quirkiness, and their effectiveness in battle. And frankly, I just love them for being them, their amazing designs, their distinctive personalities, and the fact that they creep me right the hell out. And that's why I decided to count down my top 10 favorite ghost Pokemon. I'm also going to be picking and choosing from the upcoming Sun and Moon, so you might see some of those brand new Pokemon on this list right here. And I think it goes without saying that this is my personal list, so there's a good chance that some of your favorite ghost type Pokemon are not going to be in this video. However, if you do have a favorite ghost Pokemon or even a top 10 favorite ghost Pokemon, please tell me who they are in the comments section below and why. And make sure to tell me what you're excited to see in the upcoming game, Pokemon Sun and moon. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and count down my top- okay, what- what the hell is going on? <laughs> okay, well, that was a little strange. Anywho, without further ado, these are my top 10 favorite ghost Pokémon. at number 10 is the eerie imitator of Pikachu, Mimi Q. That is correct, right at number 10 is the brand new ghost fairy Pokemon from Sun and Moon, Mimi Q. Your very first thought when seeing this Pokemon is, what the hell am I looking at? What is this Cronenberg Pikachu monster? What is it doing in my Pokemon Sun and Moon video game? Did this thing actually skin a Pikachu alive? 
Actually, no, that's not exactly what's going on, but it's pretty freaking close. Essentially, Mimikyu is this ghost fairy which is actually afraid of the sun. That's right, it's kind of like a mogwai from the Gremlins films, except it actually covers its own body with a veil that resembles Pikachu. Why a Pikachu? You see, Mimikyu is a very lonely Pokemon. It can't hang around normal people as if they see its true form, it'll cause them a mysterious illness. I'm not sure what that illness is, but this is a pretty disturbing Pokemon, which is all the more tragic in the sense that you can never see it. But there's still something adorable about it. That and the fact that it's also just creepy as hell. I don't know what it is about that head tilting, but it certainly gives me nightmares. This is going to be one of those great Pokemon mysteries I see for the future. We've never seen Diglett's feet, we've never seen Cubone's face, and I don't think we're ever going to see Mimikyu's real form. Next up at number 9 is the mascot of Pokemon Moon, Lunala. There's something hypnotically awesome about Lunala, the mascot of Pokemon Moon. This psychic ghost type is just plain regal and creepy all at the same time. Resembling a giant skeleton-like bat, Lunala is definitely one of the most unique legendary Pokemon that I've ever seen. Not to mention it's also going to have a whole separate form known as its full moon form, which supposedly makes it all the more powerful. I'm also very interested to see what Lunala's connection with Solgaleo is going to be, as that is the mascot of Pokemon Sun, and a lot of the times these legendaries seem to have some pretty big connections between them. Clearly Lunala is the beast that calls the moon. Coming in at number 8 is a ghost fire Pokemon which will certainly light up any Halloween party. It's Chandelure! Chandelure isn't exactly a creepy Pokemon, but what I really love about this thing is just how creative its evolutionary line is. It begins as a Pokemon known as a Litwick, which is a little ghost candle, which eventually becomes a Lampet, a Lantern, until eventually becoming the almost gothic and regal looking Chandelure. This looks like something that Jack Skellington would put in his apartment. This looks like the exact centerpiece you need at any Halloween party, and the fact that it's a ghost fire type just makes it all the more unique. And what I love most about it is that it actually appeared in Pokémon Tournament as an actual fighting character. Who would have thought they would have been able to flesh out a sentient chandelier and turn it into a competent fighter? That's pretty freaking awesome. Visually speaking, I just love the look of this thing. It totally evokes spookiness and Halloween nature overall. I love Chandelure. Be careful when you're walking around in the woods at night, because coming in at number 7 is the creepy tree Pokemon, Trevenant. Without a doubt, Trevenant was my favorite ghost Pokemon from Pokemon X and Y. This creepy ghost grass Cyclops is just plain horrifying. The two mouths, the single glowing red eye, the creepy claws, and multiple legs. This thing is like nightmare fuel. It's the perfect combination of the apple-throwing trees from The Wizard of Oz and that one creepy-ass looking monster from the movie From Hell It Came. This thing is truly terrifying considering the fact that it came from a Pokemon which his name is Phantomp, which is basically this just super cute looking wood little Pokemon. Just look at him and then he transforms into this thing. Joining us at number 6 is the mummified menace known as Kofagrigus. Very similar to my love of Chandelure, I love the design of Kofagrigus, one of the most unique looking ghost Pokemon in existence. Heavily inspired by the Egyptian pharaohs, Kofagrigus is essentially a ghostly sarcophagus, with a nasty eerie face and four shadowy hands that constantly reach out for its victims. Grave robbers who who've mistaken them for real coffins, get way too close and trapped inside. Think 
about that for a second. There have got to be some trainers out there who've caught themselves a Cofagrigus, unknowingly realizing that they have a human body trapped inside of a Pokemon, trapped inside of a Pokeball. That's some Five Nights at Freddy Resident Evil Silent Hill shit right there, and you know that's pretty damn creepy. Next up at number 5 is the undead dragon of darkness, Giratina. Giratina is an incredibly unique Pokemon, not only being a member of the creation trio and the representation of antimatter and master of the distortion world, but it happens to have two distinct forms, its altered form and its origin form. But that's beside the point, Giratina is a massive regal monster of madness. I absolutely love the design of this creature, not only is it deadly and imposing, but truly it is ghost-like, with its combination of blacks, reds, and grays, and that incredibly jagged wingspan, which looks like billowing black smoke coming out of its back. As far as ghost Pokemon go, I would have to say that Giratina is almost certainly the most badass of the bunch, simply for how imposing it is. Not to mention it is a master of its very own distortion world. In fact, it lives there, constantly monitoring humans, waiting for its time to break out and cause all manner of destruction. Digging his way through the darkness and arriving at the fourth spot on my list is the impish Pokemon, Sableye. Like a lot of ghost Pokemon, Sableye sort of rides the line between being cute and horrifying all at the same time. The most unique feature about this Pokemon, without a doubt, are its massive crystalline eyes, which look like two diamonds which always glow in the darkness. Sableye itself is not exactly a dangerous Pokemon, however, they seem to be feared by people. According to the Pokedex, these Pokemon are thought to steal the spirits of humans when their eyes burn with a sinister glow in the darkness. And you're certainly going to see those piercing eyes and those sharp teeth in the darkness. Oddly enough, though, it's not really a dangerous Pokemon. In fact, it seems to almost entirely live off of eating rocks, and the substances that it gains from these rocks actually make their way through Sableye's body, even crystallizing on the outside, giving it a very eerie glow. Like I said, Sableye's not exactly a scary Pokemon, but it's certainly been one of my favorites from the entire series. Returning from the grave at number three is the Alola regional variant of Marowak. That's right, we finally have our very first Alolan Pokemon on the list, and it is the brand new Alola form Marowak. Now, I was never that big of a fan of Marowak from the original games. I have to be perfectly honest, I never really used this Pokemon all that much. It was essentially there just to complete my Pokedex. However, the thing I love most about this brand new Marowak is how it's sort of like tied to the original Pokemon game. You see, in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and the original Japanese games, there's an element of the story where you arrive in Lavender Town, and you have to solve the mystery of the deadly ghost Pokemon who are attacking everyone. And it just so happens that this mysterious ghost at the top of the tower is a dead Marowak mother who had unfortunately been killed by Team Rocket, and its young Cubone were lamenting the loss of its mother. Somehow, they've taken this ghostly element, brought it 20 years into the future, and transformed Marowak into one of the coolest ghost types that I have ever seen. Not only does it look different, but it gets a brand new typing of fire and ghost. That's right, not only is it a ghost, but it has fire abilities. It has dark skin and a brand new bone which is covered with fire at both ends, making it very similar to a fire twirler that you would see at just about any Polynesian festival or even at a Hawaii. Hawaiian Luau. It's the absolute perfection in looking at a classic Pokemon and giving it a brand new fresh twist. I cannot wait to use an Alolan Marowak. I absolutely love the connection to the original games, and if you want a little more elaboration on that, I would highly recommend checking out the anime Pokemon Origins. There's a whole episode dedicated to the dead Marowak mother, and I'm certain that it will make you appreciate the Alola form of Marowak.
Arriving at the number two spot is the devilish doll Pokemon, Banet. Banet is just plain horrifying. Honestly, this is the Pokemon that creeps me out the most, mostly because we never actually see its true form. Very much like Mimikyu, this thing is actually using a veil to not actually reveal itself, and its initial form is creepy enough. Just look at the freaking smile, the zipper mouth, those nasty eyes, its loose form, and then you see its mega form, which somehow becomes even more terrifying and piss your pants inducing. You actually get to see its real form is leaking out from all of the stitches and zippers all over its body with its creepy pinkish red claws. Definitely the creepest in my humble opinion. And if you want to know more, let's just take a look at the Pokedex. That always manages to make these things seem a little more terrifying. Bannet generates energy from laying strong curses by sticking pins into its own body. That's right, it sticks pins into its body. It's not just a doll, it's not just a puppet, it's a freaking voodoo doll. This Pokemon was originally a pitiful plush doll that was thrown away by its trainers. That's right, this thing is essentially trying to get revenge against humanity by tricking them into catching it so that it can curse them forever. Bannet is terrifying, end of story, and it's just about time for number one. But before we get there, first I just want to give a few honorable mentions because there's just so many amazing ghost Pokemon. Just barely missing the cut is the little possession Pokemon Rotom. I love this Pokemon simply for how unique it is for the fact that it takes its ghost origins very seriously by being able to possess a number of different forms which also alters its typing. Not to mention in the upcoming Sun and Moon, this thing is going to get even closer to the trainer in a lot of weird ways. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the Dusk Noir line. I absolutely love all of these guys. Duskull in particular, I don't know why. Maybe it's just the fact that it's this goofy little caricature of the Grim Reaper, which eventually turns into a mummified Cyclops and then becoming an evil dark ghost. This thing just screams ghost Pokemon, but it's still not quite my favorite. And last but not least, there is Miss Magius, the evolved form of Mischievous. I just love the overall look of this Pokemon because it reminds me of a ghostly witch. Whenever I think of Pokemon and Halloween, this is one of the very first Pokemon to pop into my head. And finally, coming in at number one is my favorite ghost Pokemon, which just so happens to be my favorite Pokemon of all time. The original ghost master of disaster, Gengar. Without a doubt, Gengar is the premier ghost Pokemon of the entire series. It was the ultimate ghost Pokemon from the very first generation. It's managed to endure for 20 years. It was probably one of the very first Pokemon you ever saw from the intro of Pokemon Red and Blue. It appeared in the very first episode of the anime series. It's even a playable character in Pokémon Tournament. Gengar is just perfect, in my opinion. Its design is amazing, being both creepy, scary, and somehow cute all at the same time, but still constantly threatening with its massive smile and its piercing red eyes. And speaking of its evolutionary line, I honestly do believe it is just perfect. I love Ghastly, I love the creepiness of Haunter with its disembodied hands, but Gengar at the end of the day just exudes so much perfect Pokemon personality. Big smile, big tongue, all creepy, amazing mega evolution form, especially if you have a shiny Gengar, which makes it turn white. For a little more info on Gengar, let's take a look at its Pokedex entries. Sometimes on a dark night, your shadow thrown by a street light will suddenly and startlingly overtake you. This is actually a Gengar, running past you, pretending to be your shadow, keeping you paranoid, afraid, and constantly looking over your shoulder, worrying that this thing is going to eventually find you and absorb all of your body heat, causing you to be be chilled 
to the bone. Gengar continues to reign supreme as my favorite Pokemon, and it also just happens to be my favorite ghost Pokemon from the entire series. And so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, those are my top 10 favorite ghost Pokemon. Remember, this list is simply just my opinion, I didn't take stats into account. These are just the ghost Pokemon I like just for liking them. Remember, if you guys have a favorite ghost Pokemon or a top 10 favorite ghost Pokemon, tell me who they are in the comment section below. And make sure to stay tuned for the rest of Pokemon Month. I have a number of top 10 videos and discussions around the corner and maybe a few other surprises. If you guys have anything Pokemon related you would like me to talk about, please tell me what that is in the comment section below. I don't particularly want to talk about the spoilers which came out today. As I mentioned, there is a brand new demo for Pokemon Sun and Moon, and it got data mined to hell. Pretty much everybody knows the entire Pokedex, and I'm one of those guys who doesn't want to look at that. I want to be surprised when I play this brand new game. I want to be able to walk into a patch of grass and see a Pokemon that I've never seen before. That sense of discovery is amazing, and it's something that I honestly haven't felt since I played the original Pokemon games, and I want to try my best to replicate that feeling. For those who are curious, the music in this video was provided by Family Jewel 7 x He does these amazing rock video game covers, and you should definitely check out his YouTube channel. I will put a link for that in the description box below. With that being said, we have just kicked off Pokemon Month. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like and share it with all of your friends and make sure to leave me a comment or two. I will see you guys next time. And as always, stay dandy, baby.